hurricanes, cups, classics, all this coming up this week on Horses and Courses. This is the OTV Television Network. Television Network presents Horses and Courses. OTB Thoroughbred News with your host, Jack Wolfeseeder. And now with a look at this week's news in the thoroughbred industry, here's Jack. And hello everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. Well, a very interesting week, especially down in South Florida as we're all watching Hurricane George uh, blow through the Florida Keys after dismantling El Comandante, uh, the racetrack down in Puerto Rico, and uh, they had to close indefinitely and uh, stayed just far enough south of uh, the Miami area uh, that uh, Caldo was spared. So good news there as they were able to get their stakes racing action in over the weekend, and then as the, as the hurricane uh, swirled its way up into the Gulf of Mexico uh, and finally petering out uh, along uh, the Gulf Coast, the northern Gulf Coast, but uh, quite a scare down at Calder. As for our races this week, uh, not too much affected by the hurricane uh, itself. We're able to get them all in, and we have uh, some cups and classics to go along with uh, Hurricane George. So let's uh, start right in taking a look at the, the action from around the country this week. In Calder on Saturday afternoon, the Foolish Pleasure Stakes was run. Uh, we've got two-year-olds now. These are going a flat mile, $75,000, the guaranteed purse on the race. Here's Phil with the call of the Foolish Pleasure. Three quarters and one fourteen flat, and they're at the top of the stretch. What kind of deal is this with one last trick to the far outside? Johnny Dollar ranges up, then it's two lengths back to the inside, grade one. They come to the 16th pole with the lead. One last trick, a half length. On the outside, Johnny Dollar coming to him, drifting out. They come to deep stretch. One last trick, Johnny Dollar on the outside. One last trick takes the foolish pleasure stake. One last trick. A two-year-old son of Phone Trick, three quarters of a length in the Foolish Pleasure. Saturday, Cornelio Velasquez on board for the win, sent off at three to one, beating the two to one favorite, Johnny Dalla. Grade one was your show horse. One last trick uh, gets the mile in 141 and four. Sunday afternoon, the two-year-old Phillies had their go-round at a flat mile in the Jack Smallwood Stakes. Again, we've got a $75,000 guaranteed purse. And again, Mr. Saltzman gives us the race call. The half in 48 and 4. There's going to be a quarter of a mile to go in the Jack Smallwood Stakes, and Rapinera is the one to catch. She's been there since the beginning. She leads a length and a half. Next comes Sweeping Story. Here comes Rapinera's stablemate, Bal d'Argent, on the outside. The field moves to the eighth pole. Rapinera leads by three. It's Sweeping Story second. Bal d'Argent is third. Two lengths to the outside. Sweet Runner. They come to the 16th pole. Rapinera put to left handed pressure, maintains a two length lead. Sweep story a game second two and a half back Val d'Argent it's Rapinera she takes the Jack Smallwood stakes Rapinera Pedro Rodriguez two and a quarter lengths aboard the four to five favorite a wire to wire job for trainer Bill March a daughter of Zen Ferraccio. sweeping story and Val d'Argent will be the second and third runners uh, Rapinera she goes her mile a little bit a tick quicker than the Colt did one last trick on Saturday as she goes in 141 and three. Sunday afternoon in Virginia, Colonial Downs, the Buckland Stakes was run. We've got Phillies and Mares going three quarters of a mile and they're on the lawn, $50,000, the guaranteed purse. 
Dave Rodman at Colonial has the call of the Buckland for us. They round the turn, head for the top of the straight now. Incredible revenge. Start at once, full of run on the outside. B Cup's got a winning shot too. Mingo Magic gets a little weary on the inside as Passage Yada with the inside passage. 3 16 to the finish line. Incre oh, it's falling as start at once. Start at once fell. A couple of horses uh, avoided to start at once who fell at the uh, furlong marker. Coming down the stretch to the 16th hole. Incredible revenge is clear with Belle de Soleil. Incredible revenge and Belle de Soleil. It's a basic wire to wire score for the tough. Incredible revenge. Incredible revenge. Three lengths. Eddie Sheridan on board. He, she just outquicked him right out the gate. This daughter of Rajah's revenge uh, and gets the victory for trainer George England. Belle de Soleil was second. Uh, B Cup finished in the third spot at five to two. Incredible revenge goes the grassy Buckland Stakes in 108 and three. Delaware on Saturday had two-year-olds going in the Dover Stakes. Uh, these juveniles are sprinting six furlongs. $50,000 is the guaranteed purse on the Dover. Let's take a look at them. Is Johnny Curran describing the action. Earlton by three parts of a length. Being pressured now by It's a Prospect in second. Three lengths to try to gain on the top two. That's Search for Love toward the inside. Jovial Brush next in line as they head for home and Shotgun Frank has dropped out of it. Earlton continues after a half in 45 and two on the front end by two and a half. It's a prospect, made a run, couldn't sustain it. Up on the outside, search for love, followed by Jovial Brush, 16th to go, and it's Earlton. Another impressive performance for this two-year-old. He'll make it five out of six in his career. Earlton will win it by about three and a half to four lengths. It's a prospect, run a good one for second with search for love. Earlton is just too good for these other two-year-olds. This, this son of Buckaroo, trained by Ben Perkins, uh, gets the three and a half length score. Two to five, the fans knew this qual the quality of Earlton. Al Toribio on board for trainer Perkins. It's a prospect to search for love. The place in show runners. Earlton's three quarters of a mile at Delaware in one ten and four. Okay, at the Meadowlands on Friday night, the very important Buick Pegasus handicap half million dollars on the line here for the older horses they're going nine furlongs dave johnson in east rutherford has the call of the pegasus and they're off in the buick pegasus toward the inside rock and roll along with tomorrow's cat those two up front followed by limit out who's reined back. There goes Arctic Sweep taking over third. Limit out in the yellow colors in fourth. Bartertown is fifth and Comic Strip is the sixth and last horse. About seven lengths from the lead as they round the clubhouse turn. It's rock and roll with Jerry Bailey on the front end by a length and a quarter. Tomorrow's Cat with Joe Bravo on the outside second. Limit out at the rail is racing third a half length. Then comes Arctic Sweep with the red cap fourth on the outside comic strip inches up into fifth position away from the rail and barter town trails down the back stretch after an opening quarter of 23 and 3 23 and 1 and the half in 46 and 3 it's rock and roll with jerry bailey trying to stretch that speed in front now by three parts of a length tomorrow's cat on the outside inches up ever closer as limit out gains ground in third Comic Strip is now fourth on the outside with the green cap as they move midway on the turn. Rock and roll in front ahead. Here comes tomorrow's cat to challenge. Bailey and Bravo on the front end. Noses apart with Limit Out and Jean-Luc Samin closing with every stride. Comic Strip is a close-up fourth as they turn for home in the Pegasus. Tomorrow's cat takes command. Rock and roll back into the second spot. Limit Out is third and down the stretch they come. Tomorrow's cat with Joe Bravo drawing clear. Limit Out is second and comic strip at the rail is third. Here's the finish of the Buick Pegasus. It's Tomorrow's cat winning it by three. Limit Out second, comic strip third. Well, Tomorrow's cat had some knee surgery and uh, Mark Hennig was very patient with him and it paid off as he gets his first graded stake score here by three Friday night at the Meadowlands. Joe Bravo up on tomorrow's cat, a son, of course, of Storm Cat, pressed the pace early and then just said, well, I'll see you guys later on. Limit out, 
coming right back uh, for Alan Jerkins after scoring in the Jerome uh, just a week ago. Runs on nicely, gets the play spot. And we've got comic strip uh, hitting the board here for the show money. But it's tomorrow's cat with a nice win in 146 and 4. All right, let's take our first break here. When we come out the break, we've got action from the Kentucky Cup races at Turfway this past Saturday afternoon. We've also got action from Northern California. Fairplex closed out the Pomona meeting. And of course, the Belmont Park action, including a crack sprint, the Vosburg. Much, much more to come. Don't go away. Be right back after these messages. This is the Off-Track Betting Television Network. Ever thought of owning a pro team? Dream on! But you can still be a sports owner, thanks to the New York Breeding and Racing Program. You can't afford a major league ball club. This is a perfect alternative. You're the owner. You're the George Steinberg. It's pretty far-fetched to think that you could own a, a ball club or a hockey team or a football team, but it's really not out of the question if you have some success in life that you could own a thoroughbred racehorse. When the horse crosses the finish line, you think you won the World Series. Capital OTV kicks off the month of October with an out-of-state special event. This Saturday, October the 3rd, it's the $250,000 Virginia Derby from Colonial Downs. This event is for three-year-olds and will be run at a mile and a quarter on the turf. The race call with track announcer Pete Zemanski will be live on WVKZ Radio and televised live to all Capital OTV simulcast branch locations and the OTV television network. Don't miss the Virginia Derby this Saturday, October 3rd. Approximate post time is 6 p.m. All right, to Florence, Kentucky, Turfway Park. Remember uh, last week we showed you the turf racing portion of the Kentucky Cup at Kentucky Downs. Now we've got the main track portion. We'll start you off with the juvenile fillies. They're going a mile, $100,000 in guaranteed purse monies. We've got Mike Battaglia calling the races at Turfway. Here we go with the juvenile fillies. And they're off. For the lead, the inside, Storm and Hannah, the outside, Cold Awakening. Up between those two, that's Chocolate Crunch. Then through from the rail, too many. Into the first turn, Storm and Hannah leads it by a length and a half. Up on the outside, Cold Awakening takes second a length. Chocolate Crunch third by two, too many runs fourth. Miss Jennifer Lynn has dropped over to the rail, now takes fifth. Then fit for Maddie, grand deed. And the trailer, Chelsea's house, 22 and two for the first quarter. Storm and Hannah on the inside has a head in front. Cold Awakening second, two and a half. Chocolate Crunch runs third, too many is fourth. Grand deed gains ground, takes fifth. Then Miss Jennifer Lynn, Chelsea's house and fit for Maddie. The half went in 45 and three. As they move into the turn, Storman Hannah has a head in front. On the outside, Cold Awakening second. Two and a half to Grand Deed, who now gains ground third. Chocolate Crunch is fourth. Miss Jennifer Lynn moves up in fifth. Then it's Chelsea's house in sixth. As they move for the stretch, Storman Hannah has a head in front. On the outside, Cold Awakening Grand Deed up in the center of the track is gaining ground from between horses. Cold Awakening on the outside. Grand Deed. Now Grand Deed gets the lead. Grand Deed up to win it almost a length. Grand Deed was sent off at 6-5, to five, the daughter of Allie Deed for trainer Kenny McPeak, and gets her third in a row. She's now three out of four, and she's had one second. Uh, Gary Stevens in the Irons. Cold Awakening, Storm and Hannah, second and third under the line. Grand Deed goes her mile at Turfway, 138 and three. All right, next up, the Kentucky Cup Juvenile for the two-year-old Colts. Uh, we're going a mile on the 16th. Again, $100,000. The guaranteed purse is Mike with the call. <laughs> And they're off for the lead. And along the inside, Time Bandit and Halo Romeo. 
Quickly up between horses, Max Rule. Then on the outside, Alley's Alley. Into the first turn, Max Rule on the outside. The inside, Halo Romeo. Those two are right together. Gap of two and a half. Time Bandit takes third a length. Alley's Alley is fourth. Length and a half to Silky Sweep in fifth. Lecture down along the rail is sixth. Then it's Satan East followed by Shake Me, Wake Me. Air Rocket Trails, first quarter, 22 and three. From between horses, Max Rule has the lead a half length. Time Bandit now gains ground up on the outside second. Then a gap of two and a half. Alley's Alley moves by, takes third ahead. Halo Romeo is fourth. Length and a half to lecture down along the inside in fifth. As they move into the turn, the half and 46. Still on the inside, Max Rule. Up on the outside, Time Bandit. They're together. Then a gap of two, Alley's Alley runs third. Three lengths back, through from the inside into fourth. That's Halo Romeo. As they move into the stretch, Time Bandit. On the inside still, Max Rule. Alley's Alley up on the outside. In the final furlong, Alley's Alley puts ahead in front. Then Time Bandit, Max Rule. It's Alley's Alley. Then Time Bandit, Alley's Alley wins the juvenile by two. Alley's Alley, Pat Johnson up for trainer John tomorrow. Kept chasing the speed. You know Time Bandit's going to have distance limitations. Uh, we saw that uh, in the Saratoga race, and uh, although he's getting a little better, he still just can't quite get these, uh, these races beyond uh, six, seven furlongs. Time Bandit has to settle for second as the seven of five favorite. Alley's Alley, a son of Al Hush, gets the juvenile for the two-year-old coach. Max Rule there was your uh, show horse. Alley's Alley's time, 1.45 and 3. The Kentucky Cup Sprint is next, folks, on the Kentucky Cup card at Turfway. Three quarters for the older horses, $150,000, the guaranteed purse on the sprint. Mike Pataglia describing the action. And they're off. For the lead, from between horses, Mr. Burt Baccaro, X marks the cop and high tech on the outside. Then along the inside, re raise They're very well bunched. Mr. Burt, X marks the cop. re raise down along the inside. Then high tech and Baccaro. Three back to Copeland, two. And the trailer, bad storm coming. 21 and two for the first quarter. re raise on the inside gets the lead. Now by a length. Then Mr. Burt, second. On the outside, X marks the cop, third. High tech is fourth. Picaro runs fifth, then Copeland two, and bad storm coming. Midway through the turn, Re-Raise continues to lead, now draws off, leads it by three, Mr. Burt second ahead, then X marks the cop, up on the outside gaining ground, that's a high tech, also gaining ground, Copeland two, but Re-Raise just draws off. Re-Raise opens up a 10 length lead, close for second, Re-Raise wins it in hand. Re-Raise with Nakatani in the irons gets a 12 length blowout score. Where was the competition here? Forget it, there was none. Craig DeLassi, uh, a boy uh, saddling the three to five favorite a son of Danza Tory. Copeland, too, and Mr. Burt, well, I guess you got to give them the second and third money, although they hardly deserve it. Not much of a race at all. Re-raise goes the six furlongs in 108 and two. Phillies and mares are up next in the Turfway Breeders' Cup handicap. These distaffers are going a mile and a sixteenth, quarter of a million dollars in added monies on the line here. Again, Mike Battaglia describing the action. And they're off. Biting time breaks sharply on the extreme outside, the inside. Meter made between those two, Lilia Gold. Then dance design and proper banner into the first turn. Biting time on the outside has a short lead. Ten along the rail, meter made second. Then a gap of two and a half. 
Lilia Gold runs third of length. Dance Design is fourth. Proper Banner is fifth. Then it's a big gap back to Dancing Gulch and three fanfares. First quarter went in 22 and two. The leader, Biting Time, has it a length and a half. Then Meter Maid is second. Up on the outside, Dance Design third. Two back to Lilia Gold fourth. Proper Banner is fifth. It's eight lengths back to Dancing Gulch and three fanfares. They ran a half in 45 and four. Still biding time in front. Has it a length over Meter Maid. Two back to Dance Design third. Then down along the rail, Lilia Gold fourth, followed by Proper Banner. Dancing Gulch and three fanfares. Midway through the turn and biding time. In front, draws off two and a half meter made second. Dance design has dropped back. Through from the inside, that's Lily, a gold proper banner. Then dancing gulch, but down the stretch, biding time, draws off, leads by five. Meter made second, then dancing gulch. It's biding time. In front, meter made second, biting time, a wire to wire win. Biting time, Nakatani wins another at Turfway on Saturday by six lengths. Why is them? She's just too good for these other distaffers. This daughter of Seeking the Gold, trained by Mark Hennig, goes the mile in the 16th in 143 flat with meter made and dancing gulch finishing in the second and third spots. And finally, to conclude our coverage of this past weekend's Kentucky Cup, the classic. A mile and a furlong, half million dollars, the guaranteed purse on the race. Let's take a look at them go. Again, we go to Mike Battaglia for the call of this year's Kentucky Cup Classic. And they're off. Silver Charm broke sharply from the inside post. On the outside, Acceptable and Wild Rush. Those three a team as they move under the wire for the first time, then Magnify and Ian's Thunder. Into the first turn, Acceptable now puts the head in front. Wild Rush on the outside, Silver Charm down along the rail. And it's a gap of four lengths to Magnify and a big gap back to Ian's Thunder. First quarter, 23 and one. As they move for the back stretch. On the inside, Acceptable has the lead, now a half length. Wild Rush second by two, Silver Charm third by three, Magnify fourth, a dozen lengths back to Ian's Thunder. On to the back stretch, now Wild Rush moves by and gets the lead. There goes Silver Charm, now up on the outside, he takes second. Acceptable third, then Magnify and Ian's Thunder, the half, 46 and two. As they move into the turn, Wild Rush is in front with Silver Charm, now gaining ground up on the outside. Wild Rush still has a head in front. Silver Charm, second acceptable, has dropped back. Then Magnify and Ian's Thunder, they're midway through the turn. On the inside, Wild Rush ahead in front. Silver Charm up on the outside. Big gap back to Acceptable and Magnify. They're into the stretch. Wild Rush still game on the inside. Here's Silver Charm up on the outside. Those two are still together with less than a furlong to run. Silver Charm, Wild Rush on the inside. Those two fight to the wire. Wild Rush and Silver Charm, it's a head bob finish. Well, I suppose there's several ways of looking at this. Uh, for those fans of Silver Charm, uh, a win is a win is a win in the grade three, even though you have to split it up a little bit. And according to rider Gary Stevens, he was back to his old self. To my way of thinking, if he's back to his old self, he would have won by Wild Rush like he was tied at the eighth pole. And remember, Wild Rush didn't exactly set the world on fire here at Saratoga, now did he? Uh, the last part of the meeting. So we got a dead heat in the grade three classic with uh, Baffert, and Pat Byrne, trainers of Silver Charm and Wild Rush, respectively. Gary Stevens and Pat Day, respectable jockeys. Acceptable was 17 lengths further back, and we'll get the third place money. Dead Heat, Silver Charm, and Wild Rush in the classic in 147 and 2.
Okay, from Kentucky, let's go down to Louisiana Downs as they had quite a weekend themselves. We'll start you off with the Saturday running of the Louisiana Downs Handicap. Race for the older horses on the grass at a mile and a sixteenth. Purse on the handicap, $125,000 in guaranteed monies. Let's take a look at him. Here's Chris Kudelak with the call. And there they go. Scott Scoundrel goes up to the front. Capote's prospect with his speed. Burbank to the outside. An aboriginal apex joins them. That's the first four. Sharif prospect from off the pace in fifth. Five from the front towards his inside. Maristani right there in six. Special moment seventh. Followed by Milligan. Boy stuff is last. He trails by at least ten as they go into the turn. Capote's prospect by himself. They're letting the speed ball go. And it's Capote's prospect. Aboriginal apex comes out off the rail. He's in second. But Capote's prospect with a quick turn of speed leads it by over two. Along the inside, Scott Scoundrel, Burbank lapped right alongside of him. Those two race together a joint third, five from the front. Two and a half back then to Maristani, who's in fifth. Then it's another three back to Special Moments in six. Sharif's Prospect, a long gap back to Milligan. And the last horse is still Boy Stuff, who trails by 15. A half mile to run, Capote's Prospect by two. Aboriginal Apex stalking in second. He's a closer second now. Scott Scoundrel, third at the rail. Burbank in fourth. Maristani in fifth. He's fifth. They're tightening up now. Special Moments getting up a close closer to the leader. He is just seven from the front. Then it's three back to Sharif's prospect. Capote's prospect still in a stroll. He's out there. Aboriginal apex in hot water. They're getting to him. Towards the inside, Scott Scoundrel. Burbank coming. Special moments is trapped. Maristani to the outside. It's still Capote's prospect. The sprinter trying to take it from start to finish. Here they come now. Burbank, Maristani, Scott Scoundrel. Special moments gets a little daylight now. Burbank to the four. Special moments squeezes through. Scott Scoundrel at the rail. Maristani still coming. Special moments. It's still Burbank on the front end. Burbank special moments wearing him down along the inside. Here's the line. Special moments wins it a nose. Burbank was second. Maristani ran third. Special moments. A nose on the wire. Corey Lanner, he up for trainer Rich Budge. Up in time for the win. Sent off at 3-1. to one. Burbank losing the heartbreaker there. Has to settle for the play spot. Maristani gets the show money. Special moments, mile and a sixteenth in Bossier City Saturday, 141 and 1. And on Sunday afternoon down in Bossier City, the Marita Bartolo Oaks for our three-year-old fillies was the co-featured race uh, to go along with the Super Derby. The sophomore gals are on the lawn at a mile and a sixteenth, $75,000, the guaranteed purse on the race. Again, Chris Kudelak describing the action. All in line in the 98 Marie P. De Bartolo Oaks. And there they go. And it was a good start for Beauty Runs, who goes to the front with light line to the outside. Cinemine gets away in third. Penny Lake up close in fourth. Megan's Leprechaun settles back into fifth. Casey Quick in sixth, and she's about four or five from the front. To her outside, it's just enough. Hart followed along the inside by Zoe Lou, who gets up closer but near the rail. Then comes Proud Owner, followed by Stormy September. And the last horse is D Secret Code, and they go into the turn with light line, needing a, leading at a neck, maybe a half a length. Cinemine just off of her in second. Now from the outside, Penny Lake is up into third. Towards the inside at the rail, Beauty runs in fourth. Zoe Lou has worked her way up into fifth. She's just four from the front. And to her outside, Megan's Leprechaun. Just enough heart is close now. She's six from the front. To her outside, Casey Quick. It's a gap of four or five back to Proud Owner, followed by Stormy September. The secret code still last. Light line in front only by nose. Cinnamine right up alongside of her. Light line fights back, though a very short lead for her as they get past the half mile pull, but Cinnamine right there. Penny Lake is still third. Beauty runs fourth. Zoe Lewis fifth. She's just two and a half from the front. Megan's Leprechaun to the outside. Just enough heart continues to get up closer. She's four from the front and just her outside. Casey Quick. Cinnamine gets that nose in front, but Light line fights right back. These two match strides, they look like one as they bend through the turn. Cinnamine, Light nine. Here's Megan's Leprechaun running a big race in third. Zoe Lewis at the rail in fourth. Penny Lake in fifth. After that, just enough heart. They come for home. Cinnamine makes the lead. Megan's Leprechaun running the race of her life to the outside. Light line is third. Zoe Lou to the outside. Now just enough heart. Just enough heart is coming quickly. Cinnamine, just enough heart between horses. Megan's Leprechaun. It's Cinnamine. Just enough heart gets to her, though. Just enough heart wins it. Just enough heart. Cinnamine and from the outside, Stormy September gain third late. Just enough hot. Daughter of Broad Brush was well back in the early going. Then comes flying down the lane and gets a half-length score at 2-1. to one. The other 2-1, to one, and actually the favorite uh, by a few 
uh, dollars was cinnamine, and she has to settle for the play spot. Stormy September is your show finisher. Just enough hot. Wayne Catalano, the trainer of this daughter of Broad Brushes, mentioned goes the mile and the 16th, 141 and 4. Well, this year's Super Derby a couple of weeks ago looked like a gargantuan affair with uh, photo finish Travers uh, trio of Coronado's Quest, Victory Gallop, and Raffi's Majesty all saying they were pointing toward the Super Derby. And as you know, folks, one by one, they dropped by the wayside or ran elsewhere, leaving Classic Cat, the winner of the first two legs, of the DeBartolo bonus, uh, the Remington race and the Thistle Down race, uh, all set to go here for a million dollars. The caveat being, he has to have at least five starters to collect that bonus. Let's take a look at him. Here's Chris's call of this year's Super Derby. And there they go. A fleet stancer broke at the back of the pack, arched from the outside, also Sir Tiff moving up towards the front from between those horses, early warning, and he's right there in the center of the course. Classic Cat gets away in four, sophisticated man who is outside in fifth. Along the inside, Houston Slough and the last horse is a fleet stancer, and they move by the stands. And here's the field in the Super Derby with Sir Tiff leading it by a half. Early warning just off of him in second. Arch to the outside of those runners in third. It's a break of four and a half lengths back to Classic Cat running along in fourth. It is outside of fleet stancer now fifth. Then Sophisticated Man and Houston Slough trails as they get to the 7 8 pole. Sir Tiff takes them along, leading it by just about a half a length. Early warning just off of him and Arch. And those three going along very comfortably. And they begin to open up. They lead it by seven lengths on Classic Cat, who's still fourth. A fleet stancer to his outside in fifth. After that, Houston Slew and now Sophisticated Man is last, and he's 12 from the front as they turn onto the back stretch. Five for longs to run in the Super Derby. Sir Tiff, early warning just off of him. Arch right there in third. Classic Cat remains in fourth. He's dropped back maybe eight from the front. A fleet stancer is going to match strides with him. After that, Houston Slew and Sophisticated Man, they go to the half-mile pull, and they are just going along as comfortably as possible. It's still Sir Tiff, early warning, and Arch. Those two ready to pounce, and they get to the 3 8 pull, and the pace picks up. Three for longs to run in the Super Derby. Early warning gets a neck in front. Arch to the outside right there. Sir Tiff in third. Classic Cat in fourth. He's got to get going. He's four from the front. Getting a little closer. Arch leads by ahead. Early warning in second. Sir Tiff in third. Classic Cat is coming now. A fleet stancer in fifth. Out of the turn. Into the stretch. The gold colors of Claiborne Farm. And Arch makes the lead. Here comes Classic Cat to run after him. Sir Tiff in third. Early warning in fourth. It's Arch leading by two and a half. Classic Cat really has to dig in. Sir Tiff Tiff in third, a fleet stancer's up into fourth. Arch at the 16th pole, classic cat running on. He's in second. Sir Tiff third, Arch wins it. Arch wins Super Derby 19. It's Arch, classic cat and Sir Tiff. Well, we had enough starters for classic cat's million dollar shot at the bonus, but uh, he just wasn't quite good enough. Arch, who is Arch? Well, uh, your Saratoga fans certainly remember him because he was up here with Frankie Brothers Stable and had a pretty decent meeting as he won his nine winners of two other than before uh, heading to Louisiana Downs for the Super Derby. So he's run right through his conditions now. Uh, Maiden, one other than, two other than. He was second along the way once. He's three wins out of four lifetime starts. Uh, a son of Chris S. by three lengths. Another win for Nakatani in Louisiana on Saturday. Classic Cat, well, for his uh, participation in the three race series, Remington, Thistle, and Louisiana, uh, he will get a consolation prize here of 200000 to go along with the 100000 he earns for coming in second. Not a bad payday. $300,000 check for Classic Cat, although I'm sure they would have had the million. Sir Tiff will finish in the show spot. Arch, mile and a quarter in the Super Derby. 2.01 and 2. <laughs> All right, wow. All right, let's go to our second break here. When we come out the break, we've got action from Fairplex as they close things out, and then back to Belmont for a terrific turf race and a phenomenal sprint Vosburgh. Don't go away. Much more to come. Be right back after these messages. This is the OTB Television Network. 
I didn't believe it was tax-free until I tried it. Tax-free million? I knew it was some cash game from the New York lottery. Come on. Who's kidding who? I thought I'd miss the taxes, but I don't. Not paying taxes changed my life in a good way. Sugar-free, fat-free, and now tax-free. It's true. Lottery pays the taxes, and you get your million dollars. Tax-free million. A million dollars with none of the taxes. You can now watch nine Naira Thoroughbred race replays from the previous day, seven days a week, every morning at 8 a.m. on the OTV Television Network. And harness race replays Tuesday through Sunday at 8.30 a.m. And if you want to watch the Thoroughbred race replays from the New York Racing Association, you can tune in at 11.30 a.m. every Naira race day. For all of your Thoroughbred and harness race replays, you can always count on the OTV Television Network. All right, out to Bay Meadows, Northern California. The William P. Kine Handicap was Saturday afternoon's featured race for the older horses. It's a $100,000 race, and they're going nine furlongs. Tony Kao's in the announce booth at Bay Meadows. Here's his call of the Kine. Kine Handicap. And there they go. And it's Wild Wonder who broke very promptly. Also, there is General Royal. March of Kings between runners. Mr. Fire Eyes outside of him. Then Hal's pal, the trailer, Profound Secret. Under the wire for the first time. And on the lead, it's General Royal. He'll lead into the clubhouse turn. Wild Wonder is up close in second. March of Kings is third. Mr. Fire Eyes currently fourth. Hal's pal a little wide into the first turn. The trailer, Profound Secret. Five lengths covers the field of six. And it's General Royal setting the pace. His lead is a neck. March of Kings applies pressure in second. Wild Wonder will use the rail running to his advantage. He's in no hurry. Third along the inside. Hal's pal's three wide through the backside. Between runners is Mr. Fire Eyes, who's about two and a half, three lengths from the front. Profound secret is the trailer. The opening quarter went in 22 and four, and the half went in 45 and four, and it's General Royal still on the lead. He extends to a two-length advantage. To the far outside races, Hal's pal. Wild Wonders trying to inch closer in third along the rail. Then we go to Mr. Fire Eyes, who's fourth. He's four lengths from the front. March of Kings has put it in reverse. He'll wait for another day. Profound secret trails. Five sixteenths to travel in the kind. And it's General Royal by a length and a half. Hal's pal is second. Mr. Fire Eyes is third. Wild Wonder is fourth along the rail with three lengths to make up. Turning into the stretch in the grade three, William P. Kine handicap. General Royal, Hal's pal, Wild Wonder to the rail will need to hurry. General Royal and Hal's pal, Wild Wonder, third, 16th to run. And it's Hal's pal and General Royal. Hal's pal has his nose in front. Hal's pal to win the William P. Kine handicap. Ben Cecil, the trainer of Hal's pal, they get a length score at odds of five to two with Bryce Blanc in the irons general royal was second and the one to two favorite wild wonder finishing in the third spot how's pal got the perfect trip there always close up and bryce uh, when bryce called on him he responded and that was that he goes the mile and a furlong up at bay meadows on saturday in 146 and two all right, last week on the show, we had the Derby trial from Pomona, and they run that on a Friday. Now they come back the following Saturday with the Derby itself at Fairplex. Three-year-olds, of course, the purse, $100,000 in guaranteed money. They're going a mile and a furlong. Trevor's got the call of this year's Pomona Derby. Hold on. For the Pomona Derby sent on their way to a good beginning. Naval Academy going to do what he likes to do, goes straight to the lead. And Naval Academy goes to the lead early. Naval Academy now a length and a quarter in front. Search Me racing in second. Saturn's ring on the outside and Opine in the white down at the rail. Shadada is tugging very hard in the fifth spot. Dog watch nice and relaxed in six as six legs off them. Fall back to Inver Gordon and the long shot runaway kid is last. Coming to the top of the stretch, first time round, Naval Academy setting a decent pace. He leads it by a length to Search Me. Opine on a tight hold in the white cap at the rail. Satin's rings on the outside of him. Shadana is still keen to go on in the fifth spot. Dog watch still right there. Six, only four lengths separates all these runners. Then it's three and a half back to Inver Gordon and runaway kid is last. 
They have five eights to go in the Pomona Derby and it's still Naval Academy taking them along by a length to search me and Saturn's ring. Opine is scraping the paint right there in the four spot in just a little tight there was Opine. Then comes Shadada. Now Dogwatch is starting to improve. Dogwatch fifth, three and a half off the leaders. Back to Inver Gordon and runaway kid. Three eights to go and it's still Naval Academy going on. Naval Academy still got running him. In second is Search Me. Opine in the white cap. And now there goes Dog Watch in fourth. Looks like we're coming down to these four. Naval Academy, Opine, the two that go on. Dog Watch still trying to run on fourth. They come to the top of the lane. Naval Academy at the rail. Opine in the white cap alongside down to these two. Opine is full of run though. And Opine taking the lead from Naval Academy with a 16th of a mile to go. And it's going to be Opine and Victor Espinosa to take the Pomona Derby. Opine from a very game Naval Academy. Search me and Dogwatch was fourth. Opine, Victor Espinosa are on board. They get a length score at 8-5 to five favoritism for trainer Eduardo Inda. And they win the Pomona Derby over Naval Academy with Search Me finishing in the show spot. Opine goes the mile and an eighth. At Fairplex in 150 flat. And on Sunday afternoon at Fairplex, we've got the Ralph M. Hines Invitational Handicap for the older horses. $100,000, the guaranteed purse. And we've got another mile and an eighth race for you from Fairplex. Here's Trevor's call of the handicap. Where to go? They all broke perfectly. Score quick, very fast, and score quick going to take the early lead. Starwood Sue on the inside, and Bad Royal in the pink on the outside. They go quickly early, can't be touched now. Send through to take the four spot. Al Bahar racing in fifth, down at the rail. Native Desert is six, four and a half off the leaders. Then back to Sovereign MD racing in the seventh spot, and Licorice Island is at the back, a good 11 lengths off these leaders. Coming to the top of the stretch, first time round, and score quick. Takes them along a sensible pace now, going quickly, but not too fast. Starwood Sue racing on the inside of that, and Bad Royale right there in third. Can't be touched in the white races in fourth. Native Desert scrapes the paint in fifth, just four lengths off the leaders. They followed by Sovereign MD. Albahar's second last, and still a long shot. Licorice Island brings up the rear. Five eights to go in the Ralph Hines Invitational and still the favourite score quick and Matt Garcia out here leading just over a length. Bud Royal tracking them in second. Starwood Sue is third. Can't be touched fourth. Just two and a half off the leaders and Native Desert right there in fifth. Sovereign MD now has to come after them in the sixth spot and then Al Bahar and Licorice Island. They have three eights to go and it's still score quick kicking on for home. In second is Bud Royal. Now there goes Sovereign MD on the outside and Sovereign MD making that early run goes to put the pressure on the leaders. Can't be touched has got a pick it up so is Starwood Sue and then Native Desert. They come into the top of the lane and score quick is finding more on the lead and score quick still tough as he kicks on gamely. Bud Royale in the pink, Sovereign MD in the white blinkers, these are the three that battle it out. Score quick keeps on finding on the lead. Bud Royale and Sovereign MD, here's the rail. Score quick has won the rail finds. Second Bud Royale and third Sovereign MD. Score quick sent off at six to five put right on the front end by Matt Garcia and hangs on as they go around a couple of times there for a half-length score in the closing Ralph N. M. Hines uh, Pomona Handicap final day of the meeting on Sunday. Bud Royale and Sovereign MD right there flying at the end, but score quick has got enough left to hang on for the score as he goes his mile and eighth in the same time as Opine did on Saturday a minute, 50 seconds on the button. Okay, in California, let's come back and take a look at our Belmont action on Saturday and Sunday. Three races are from Saturday afternoon. State bred fillies and mares in the Schenectady. They're going six furlongs, 50 thou, the added purse. Let's take a look at them. Here's Tom with the call. And three pack heads for home with the lead. Three pack driving on the lead. Holly Springs full out second. Key Sense kicks in as they come to the quarter pole, uh, to the eighth pole now. On the far outside, it's Biagio's Rose. And here comes Key Sense to take the lead. Key Sense in front. Three pack second. Holly Springs third. Biagio's Rose fourth. Key Sense the winner, drawing away through the last furlong. 
key sense. Johnny Velasquez up for trainer Pete Ferriola puts in a very strong stretch drive here at odds of five to two and goes on to a three length score in the Schenectady, uh, one of the co-features on uh, Saturday. A daughter of Carter Key is key sense. Three pack, Biagio's Rose, they're the place and showrunners in the race. Key sense, six furlongs, one, ten and four. Eighth race on Saturday's card, the Belmont Breeders' Cup handicap. Mile and a furlong, they're on the lawn down at Belmont Park. $200,000 in added purse monies. Tom Durkin with the race call. And they're off. Subordination sent away from the gate quickly. Statesmanship down toward the inside. Bombfim right up there close early. Wild event in the far outside. Into the turn. And subordination will be the pacemaker. It's subordination in front. Bombfim is second. Wild event caught three wide around the first turn. Statesmanship in a cozy spot in behind the lead fourth. Musical ghost in behind horses in hand fifth. Royal Strand three wide and sixth, followed by delay of game. He's a tough cat, and Yagli is at the back of the pack. Yagli nine lengths from the lead. The leader is Subordination, who got a quarter in 23 and four, with Bomfim pushing him along, second a length and a half. Statesmanship, a ground-saving third. Wild event has lost some ground now. He's in fourth, about five lengths from the lead. And to his inside, it's Musical Ghost. Four wide is Royal Strand. Delay of game. He's a tough cat. Yagli is trailed through the opening half mile in 47 and one fifth seconds. The pace is an honest one with subordination continuing to lead with four furlongs to go. Bomb Femme has been second throughout. Statesmanship continues to save ground on the inside third. Wild event in Musical Ghost. Midway round the far turn. Subordination a length and a half. Bomb Femme still second. On the inside, Statesmanship followed by Wild Event running in fourth. Then it's Musical Ghost followed by He's a Tough Cat. Royal Strand, delay of game. Yogli's in a tough spot down inside. Eight horses in front of him. Top of the stretch. Subordination trying to do it all the way on the lead. He'll come to the eighth pole with a two and a half length lead. Bomb Femme second. Statesmanship is third. Yagli finally gets loose and he's making up ground late. Wild Event is now fifth into the final 16th. It is subordination by two and a half. Yagli flying at the finish, but the wire will get there first with subordination, the winner by two and a half going all the way. Well, when subordination gets in a turf race, you know that when the doors open, he's going to the front and just dares anyone to catch him. He's done it in New York, he's done it in California, he's done it down in Florida, now he's back in New York again, and here he is going to the front where he loves to be with David Flores in the saddle for trainer Gary Siaka, and they just can't catch this guy. Two and a quarter lengths, the official margin, and three to one is a very nice price on subordination. Yagley uh, tried hard, but uh, nothing you can do, and he's just out there dictating the pace. Has to be second. Bomb Finn made up some ground to no avail. Gets to show money. Subordination. Can he go in the Breeders' Cup mile and a half, or will he turn back to the mile? Gary has some thinking to do on that. And he gets the Belmont Breeders' Cup handicap in one and 45 and four. Saturday's ninth race, the very, very important Vosburgh Stakes. Seven eighths of a mile for our older horses, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The guaranteed purse on the race. Wow, what a sizzler we've got for you here. Let's take a look at him. Tom's got the call of this year's Vosburg. <laughs> And they're off. Kelly Kip bounces out quickly from the gate. Tail of the Cat sent up from the inside. It is Tail of the Cat and Kelly Kip in the early going. On the outside, a firm success right up there running in third. Rare Rock is fourth. Distorted Humor, Banker's Gold right up there in the thick of it. And the trailer is Storm and Fever moving down the back stretch. It's Kelly Kip and he's surrounded by challengers. Rare Rock has come through an opening on the inside. On the outside, a firm success. It's Kelly Kip and a firm success. A 22 and 4 opening quarter. Distorted humor revving up on the outside. Now running in third. In between horses, tail of the cat. Now back to fourth. Toward the inside, Rare Rock is fifth. Storm and Fever far outside. And Banker's Gold is now the trailer as they're rounding the far turn. It is Kelly Kip and a firm success 
Those two going at it. The half went in 45 and one fifth seconds. Tail of the cat, Storm and Fever there on the outside. Distorted humor is fading as the field turns for home. Rare Rock and Bankers Gold off the turn and into the stretch. And it is a firm success taking over. A firm success in front. Now beginning to get away from Kelly Kip. Storm and Fever on the outside. By the back, Tail of the Cat. And Bankers Gold, a firm success. Driving to a three length lead. Storm and Fever second on the outside. Then farther back, Kelly Kip fades to third. Tail of the Cat, and it is a firm success under a hustling Jorge Chavez, the winner by a length and a half. Well, we saw a firm success final day of the Saratoga meeting in a four-goal romp with Chavez, and now they aim him for the Vosburg Stakes and just goes to a very nice workmanlike length and a half a score, getting his second in a row for trainer Rich Schausberg the son of a firm. The Storm and Fever and Tale of the Cat, the year uh, place and show finishes. And now we got Kelly Kip. Fifth time he has tried seven furlongs, and fifth time he has come up empty. I think Alan Jerkins got the message now, six furlongs, and that's it for Kelly Kip. Fortunately, the Breeders' Cup sprint, as we all know, is six furlongs. But a firm success, boy, He's going to be tough no matter what distance it is as he goes the seven-eighths of a mile in the Vosburg in 121 and four. And on Sunday afternoon down in New York, three-year-olds will go one and one-half miles on the Belmont lawn in the Lawrence Realization. $125,000 is the added purse on the race. Let's take a look at them as they go around the grassy oval with Tom describing the action. They're in the gate, and they're off. It's Virgens who strikes out for the early lead. Virgens taking the early initiative and is allowed to take command in the early going. Middlesex Drive concedes the lead to Virgens. Then it's double team on the far outside. Pay zone continues along on the rail, followed by I'm in the mood. Parade ground settles about eight lengths from front-running Virgens. It's another five or six to the two trailers, double team and gimme steam. The field moving into the clubhouse turn and Virgen setting a solid pace here. The opening quarter in 24 and one fifth seconds. Virgen steps out by two and a half. Middlesex Drive is second by four. Pay zone third by another four. I'm in the mood, runs along in fourth position. A distant fourth he is, better than 10 lengths from the lead. Then double team, parade ground is a dozen lengths from Virgen's as they begin the run down the back stretch. The half mile in a swift 46 and three. Virgens is setting a demanding pace here. Leads by two and a half lengths, and Middlesex Drive is in close attendance to the quick pace. Six lengths back to pay zone. Another four or five back to I'm in the mood. Parade ground down inside. Then on the outside, double team, and farther back, reformer rally. It's a long way back to a lethargic gimme steam. They've run three quarters in one, ten, and three, and there's still a half mile to go here into the far turn. It is Virgens continuing his rapid pace into the turn. Middlesex Drive is second, and the rest of the field begins to close in now. Pay zone third, and Parade Ground is now fourth on the inside. He's drawn within six lengths of the lead. There's still three furlongs to go. On the outside, it's I'm in the mood. Coming to the top of the stretch, Virgens continues to blaze the way. Middlesex drive in second. And now here comes Parade Ground with his rally. He takes to the outside for the turn into the stretch and pay zone. Top of the stretch, Virgens will try to gut it out for another furlong. But the momentum is carrying Parade Ground to the lead. It is Parade Ground in front. Virgens is second. Pay zone on the outside. Parade Ground in front. Pay zone in with an upset chance. It's three to five parade ground and 31 to one pay zone. Parade ground holds on to win. Well, you remember the siren act and uh, Neil Howard certainly does is uh, Shane Sellers had this guy in a little bit of traffic and uh, just uh, couldn't spring him clear. I don't know if he would have beat crowd pleaser that day anyway, but they made a rider switch to Pat Day and uh, that uh, seemed to do the trick as Parade ground gets a half length score, sent off the big favorite as three to five, just bided his time here and uh, rolls on for the win. Pay zone and Vergennes will be second and third. 
a parade ground going the mile and a half of the Lawrence realization in 225 and four. Okay, that's it for the replays for this week. Now, quickly, you know, our notes uh, department, uh, looking around the country, we've got the Indiana Derby and the Virginia Derby. Look for crowd pleaser coming in that one. Had a nice work at the, on the training track turf course uh, before he left for Virginia for trainer Jonathan Shepard. Let's see how he does. Also got the Remington Classic on tap uh, this week. The Judy's Red Shoes down at Calder. We'll take a look at the Cotillion. Very important race at Philadelphia Park for the three-year-old Phillies. We've got the Illinois Oaks. And here in New York, the Flower Bowl Invitational, the Ashley T. Cole for state breads, and the Bond God for state breads, and the Noble Damsel for the Phillies and Mares. And don't forget that with Fairplex uh, closing this week, that means the Oak Tree meeting at Santa Anita is now underway, and we'll have their races for you as well. So it looks like a very nice week coming up as we move through our fall championship season. I'm glad you're with us. Hope to see you again next week. And as always, stay tuned right here to your OTB TV radio network station where you get the most complete coverage in thoroughbred racing. Till next week, Jack Wolf will see you here. So long, everybody. Enjoy this autumn weekend.